is your message to women and, and to men? What do you expect from them and from you? Mm. Yeah, women I really love as I've got older and wiser, a feeling more of connection and collaboration. And I haven't always been like that. I've been fiercely competitive, really comparing mm -hmm. myself. But that was part of my trauma pattern. And I wish to now not um, move through life with that. If I'm aware that's happening, I'll do a process on it because it's a painful place to be. And I do believe we are connected in sisterhood, if you want to put it that way, and support. Um, and so much now is driven or can be looked like it's driven by competition, comparisons, and can make you feel you're not good enough if you, you know, you haven't got a certain, I don't know, all sorts of things, body, image, wealth. You know, you know there's so many things women have pressures as well to be good mothers and um, many roles now. So I feel it's good to support and empower each other, women. And with men, I feel like there is a lot of ongoing healing work um holding and coming together to be more vulnerable and mm -hmm. um men are starting to own their vulnerability more which is beautiful um but also respecting each other and where we've come from because it's been very difficult um i think ancestrally and culturally where there's been so much treating of women as second class and also men have so many pressures too now and always have um and the world is changing, I believe, for the better in that way, slowly. Yeah. So how do you know you are honoring honoring the masculine part of you and the feminine, feminine part of you? I mean, in a way, they're just words to describe different aspects, and we've labelled them masculine or feminine. Okay. So we look at the cultural context of what that actually is and how we interpret that as well. Because some traditions say Shiva and Shakti, some say um, the male is the kind of sun and the moon energy. Um, and I like that because you can everyone has both. But there's also things that have been culturally assigned to femininity, like looking pretty or um, being more soft and understanding. And, and the men are the ones that Traditionally, I guess, take it back ancestrally, we're stronger, we're out hunting food. So it's kind of come from that. But then it became a bit of a, the control stuff mm -hmm. um, through civilization. And however, deep within us, I feel we've got all of aspects of everything. It's just that we might have more female hormones or male, more male hormones. <laughs> and as we know now in, in the world we live in, there's males that feel more feminine and identify more as a woman and women of the same so for me it's like what's congruent for me because we're all going to be different but if I'm denying something that's seen as masculine like drive and power because that's been squashed down I need to re-own that but that also happens to males too so I don't want to get too like male female because that just contributes to stereotypes exactly but I also think yeah okay. I also think it's really important for men to be able to own all the feminine in part of life as well that's they've never you know if that's not been allowed for them if they want to because not everyone does yeah <laughs>